Customers who ordered the new M1 iPad Pros are receiving their orders as we speak and these iPads are crazy to put it lightly. The amount of computing power in that M1 chip found in the iPad Pros this year can rival that of actual laptops in the market. But where does that leave the iPad Pro from 2020? It isn't as powerful as the new M1 iPad Pros, but after only a year, is this suddenly irrelevant? And if you couldn't afford the new M1 iPad Pros, is it worth picking up a 2020 model? Let's find out. Let's take a look at the iPad Pro 2020 one year later. The model I have here is the 11-inch 128GB Wi-Fi only Space Gray iPad Pro from last year. And in the past year, I've used this iPad in one of three ways. The first is as a tablet and it excels in this area because the iPad created this segment. After the first lockdown, I wanted something that I could enjoy media on like I could on my desktop but with the portability of my phone. And this iPad delivers just that. The quad speaker setup delivers probably what is the best mobile sound I've ever heard. And the screen, while not being bleeding edge or OLED, still delivers crisp and color accurate images. Well, there it is. Well, a $4,000 graphics card is a pretty good start. Just like this is a pretty good start to my segue to our excellent media experience? Check. The form factor plays a huge role as well. I can never wrap my head around how something this thin and light exists. It feels like something out of science fiction. And yet, that thin and light build is what makes streaming content on this so enjoyable. Much more than you would get from a big bulky laptop. And other tasks like reading are so much nicer to do on a bigger screen like this compared to your tiny smartphones. And this is my go-to device if I want to catch up on the news go through social media, and my favourite, read manga. The second thing I use the iPad for is for content creation, especially with this, the second gen Apple Pencil. As a kid, I was always into art, and I was always meaning to get back into it as an adult. Pair that with my newfound interest in photo editing and graphic design, and this is the perfect point where all three of these worlds intersect. I mostly use the Apple Pencil to sketch, paint, make notes, and just create to my heart's content. The low latency and the near identical weight to an actual pencil or brush makes the Apple Pencil experience seamless. The pen also allows me to make minute adjustments in certain apps like photo editing and video editing something these fat fingers could never achieve. The content creation experience is so good on the iPad Pro that I literally use this to run this YouTube channel. Everything that goes into the making of one of my videos, from the researching of the topic, to drafting the script, using it as a teleprompter when shooting the video, to creating the thumbnails of the videos you see, and finally to editing the actual video itself, is all done on the iPad. And yes, you heard me, editing a video. This leads me to the third use case of this iPad, which is as a laptop. The 2020 iPad Pro is among the most powerful computing devices that I've ever used, including my seven-year-old desktop. That plus the fact that it's portable makes this my preferred editing machine. The touchscreen, the Apple Pencil, and a collection of well-optimized apps makes this such a joy to edit on. And recent improvements to iPadOS have made it possible for me to transfer my footage to the iPad Pro to edit on. Speaking of iPadOS, it has made the experience of using this as a laptop almost perfect. Paired with this smart keyboard case, I could roughly do 80% of what I could do on my old laptop just fine. That means web browsing, document editing, emails, and note taking. It also added support for Bluetooth mice and Bluetooth keyboards, making the transition from an actual laptop to the iPad Pro much more seamless and convenient. And then there's the battery life. Regardless of how I use this iPad, it easily got me through a full days of use every day without fail. The form factor easily allows me to carry this around wherever I need to. And the smart folio case I have on it, while not as advanced as the new Magic Keyboard case, 
gets the job done just fine for me. Also, when it's closed, it looks no different than a big notebook, especially with the pencil magnetically attached to the side. There's also the little things that it just gets right, like how the second gen Apple Pencil can magnetically attach itself to the side of the iPad and charge itself while it's attached. Or the fact that it's one of the only Apple devices that supports USB Type-C. It makes my job much simpler when it comes to cables, and it allows me to share certain accessories and devices between my Android phones and this iPad Pro. So, where's the catch? Why get a laptop when you could just get this? Well, it's simple. At the end of the day, regardless of how good this is as a laptop replacement, it's still a tablet. As far as the iPad Pro and iPad OS have come over the last few years, there are still some software and hardware limitations that still makes this unsuitable to be a complete laptop replacement. For example, over the last few months, I've been getting back into coding and I needed a machine to code with. Ideally, I would have loved to have used this as my coding machine. But sadly, iPads and iPad OS don't support development apps and environments. And then you have other things like connecting phones and hard disks. It's so much of a hassle to do it on this and in the end, I found myself having to go back to my desktop to do all of these things. Even things like the File Manager app. While it's come far from where it used to be, it's still nowhere near as powerful as what you can get on Windows, Mac OS, or even on Android, which makes my job of transferring footage to and from my phone to the iPad such a hassle. I don't know, it's like each time I think I can finally ditch my desktop for this as my main computer, there will always be something that arises that reminds me just how limited this is because it's a tablet. And then we have the ports, or the lack thereof. Apple positioned this as a laptop replacement device, and yet there's only one USB-C port. I would have loved to have seen maybe two USB-C ports so I can charge and transfer data at the same time, like I can do on a laptop. And sure, you can sort of do that if you get a magic keyboard case, but that's more money down the drain for something you could probably use on the device itself. And you know, while we're at it, a headphone jack would have been nice. When I record my videos, I record the audio through this mic which is hooked up to my desktop that's hooked up to Audacity that's running in the background. At the same time, I also use the iPad as a teleprompter while I'm recording my videos. It would be so much easier for me if I could just hook up this mic to this iPad and just record off it so I could edit the audio and the video at the same time from the device itself. I technically could get away with it if I invest in a dongle but that seems like more trouble than it's worth. So until then, I'm still forced to record my audio on my desktop and then transfer it to the iPad later on, adding that extra step. Also, the newer 12.9-inch 2021 iPad Pro supports Thunderbolt out of its USB-C port. So if that matters to you, that might be something to consider because none of the 2020 models support that. Coming back to the intro, is the 2020 iPad Pro worth it in 2021 or should you just get the new 2021 iPad Pro? Personally, apart from the CPU, I feel that the 2021 iPad Pros don't pack that many differences compared to the 2020 model especially the 11-inch models. If you're looking for an iPad Pro but want to save a bit of money, you could pick up one of the iPad Pros from 2020 and you would get roughly 80-90% to of the same experience on the older model. Except, this is where it gets interesting. Back when I was doing research before buying this, I ran into this exact dilemma but with the 2018 iPad Pros. I nearly got the 2018 model to save money because on paper, nothing much had changed between the 2018 model and this 2020 model. And the few differences that were there weren't really deal breakers to me even if I didn't get them. But in the end, I couldn't find a good condition 2018 iPad Pro model and since the 2020 model wasn't that much more expensive, I decided to go for this instead. But over the last year of owning this, what really stuck in my mind was just how future-proof that 2018 model was. So much so that when the 2020 model came out, the 2018 iPad was still a viable option. And you know what? Even with this new iPad Pro from 2021, 
That 2018 model is still a viable option in my opinion. The chip and the specs of that 2018 model were overkill back then. And even by today's standards, it's quite powerful. Sadly, all that power the 2018 model, the 2020 model, and even the 2021 model have is sort of pointless because there's one major bottleneck that hasn't been resolved. And that's the operating system itself. If I had to give an analogy for the iPad Pro's lineup right now, it would be like taking a Ford Mustang engine and shoving it in a Fiat Panda. Sure, that Fiat Panda is going to outperform every other small hatchback in the market. But without the other supporting components like good suspension and aerodynamics, that Mustang engine will never reach its full potential like it can in an actual Mustang. And it's sort of where the iPad Pro lineup is right now. It's been coming closer and closer to replacing an actual laptop over the years with the amount of raw horsepower that's in these iPad Pros. But because of the operating system situation, it's being chained back as nothing more than a really beefy tablet. There's a strong demand for these iPad Pros to run Mac OS, which is what the MacBook Pros, the Mac Pros, and even the iMacs run. The 2018 and 2020 iPad Pros could probably do it, and the 2021 iPad Pro could definitely do it because it shares the same CPU as the MacBook lineup and the iMac lineup right now. But for some reason, Apple hasn't done it. There's also a vocal opposition that says if you wanted a portable device that ran macOS, then just get a MacBook. I see where both sides are coming from, but personally, I feel this whole mess was created when Apple tried to market the iPad Pro as a laptop replacement. Hey, hey, what you doing on your computer? What's a computer? Personally, I feel the solution and the future of the iPad Pro lineup lies somewhere in between the two camps. I enjoy iPad OS for what it is, a more powerful version of iOS that brings iPads closer and closer to a desktop environment. The form factor of the iPad Pro with no physical buttons requires something like iPad OS's gesture-based navigation to use comfortably. To get rid of all of that in favor of Mac OS, which was designed and created with computers in mind rather than touchscreen devices, would be a huge mistake I feel. However, I feel Apple could do a lot more to earn that Pro title in its name. The file management system is the biggest hurdle they're going to face moving forward, and they'll have to make this on par with what you can get on a Windows PC or on Mac OS, so that professionals can take full advantage of the iPad Pro for their creative needs. The quality of the apps is also something Apple will need to improve in the future. I know the reason a lot of people want Mac OS running on the iPad Pro is because they want Final Cut Pro running on the iPad Pro. But personally, I'm fine with apps like LumaFusion which is the closest thing you'll get to Final Cut Pro on the iPad Pro. What needs to improve is the cross compatibility between these devices. At the moment, I see a lot of users complain that they cannot open their LumaFusion projects in Final Cut Pro but they have no problems doing the opposite. Things like these have to be fixed if Apple is serious on keeping the iPad Pro a professional device. At least make it easy for your customers to be able to pick up their projects from the iPad on their Mac devices rather than making them choose to either start and finish a project on the iPad Pro or their Mac device. On a similar note to LumaFusion, I would love to see desktop class apps for development purposes because I and many other people would love to use the iPad Pros for development purposes. The fact that something like LumaFusion can exist but things like development apps and environments don't lead me to believe that these are limitations of iPad OS that Apple could probably improve on in the future. So. After going through all of that, where does that leave us? Ultimately, you could get either the 2021 iPad Pro, the 2020 model from last year, or even the 2018 model from 3 years ago, and you would be walking away with a really good tablet that at a moment's notice, 
could become a laptop replacement for most casual users. The hardware is really powerful for most use cases and even for a power user like me, it's able to keep up with my needs as a content creation device. However, before you pull the trigger on any of these models, I strongly suggest you wait till after Apple's developer conference in June to make up your mind. There's a slim chance that Apple is going to announce something big for iPad OS 15 this June, and depending on what they announce, that might make your choice all the more easier. If, let's say, the new iPad OS 15 has certain features that require the use of the M1 chips in the new iPad Pros, and you find yourself really wanting those features, then you're going to have to get the new 2021 iPad Pro. If, however, those same features end up coming to the older 2020 and 2018 models of the iPad Pro, then I strongly recommend to pick up the 2020 iPad Pro model. It's almost as powerful as the 2021 iPad Pros. It's cheaper than the 2021 models, which means you're going to save a bit on the cost. And because it's newer than the 2018 model, it's going to be a bit more future-proof than getting a 3-year-old iPad Pro. So yeah, a year later, the 2020 iPad Pro is still a good buy. It's a device that's so ahead of its time that its full potential hasn't even been unlocked yet and you won't be disappointed picking one up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe and share. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Despite how much it excels as a wrap-up... Wrap-up...